Intermediate Accounting 6E Bonds Issued with Attached Warrants. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our website. The book Cost Accounting for Dummies is available March of 2013. I have a free online course that will be taught on an ongoing basis. And the Twitter page. This video is going to cover two methods of handling a bond that you issue with a warrant. Two different methods. So at the top here I'd like to go over some concepts first. And what you have to imagine is, imagine a bond that's issued that with detachable warrants. And I'm going to define what a warrant is in a minute. One method to allocate the value of what you receive between the bond and the warrant is the re residual allocation method, which means that we use the total amount that we receive when we issued the bond with the warrant. And we subtract the fair market value of the bond. It's assumed that you know the fair market value of the bond. And what's left is the amount that you record on your books for the warrant. So here's an example. And in this example, there is some information that we don't need to answer the question. So I want to point that out. So we have 100 bonds that we issue, and each bond has a face amount of $1,000, which is what we're liable for to pay the investor back at maturity. Now, this problem gave us a 5% 10-year maturity, which isn't needed for this problem. It may be needed for a question about bond amortization, but it's not necessary for this problem. And what I mean by that is we don't, we don't use the 5% coupon rate and we don't use, in this question, the 10-year maturity. The issue the price of the bond is 105 or 105% of the $1,000 face amount. So, the fair value of the bond, just the bonds by themselves, <coughs> it's 100 bonds times a thousand so those one hundred thousand dollars in bonds are actually valued at a hundred and one thousand so slightly more than the par value of a hundred thousand dollars in bonds a hundred times a thousand and that's immediately after the issue date now let's talk a little further about what is a warrant and I put down here a warrant is a liability now when we get to the T account you're gonna see that we credit <coughs> for a warrant, but it's a liability in that the issuer, the person who issues the bond and the warrant, is obligated to sell stock if the warrant holder decides to exercise the warrant and buy stock. And in this example, we have one warrant attached to each bond, and there's 100 bonds total, which means there's 100 warrants. And one warrant allows the holder to purchase one share of common stock at an exercise or option price of $20 a share. Again, that $20 a share is not necessarily something I need to answer this specific question. We had the fair value of the bonds without the warrants up here, $101,000. The fair market value of the warrants themselves is $5,500. Using the residual allocation method, residual applying whatever is left over is, we take the proceeds, everything we received when we issued the bonds with the warrants attached, which was 105000 We then subtract the fair value of the bonds without the warrants attached, which was 101000 And whatever is left over, that's the value that we post to the books for the warrants, which is 4000 So the journal entry is the cash we get, the proceeds we get for both the bond and the warrant. The $4,000 warrant value, and I put a note down here that we must issue stock if exercised. <clears throat> so in a sense, it's a liability because you do have some obligation attached to it. Same would be true of options, warrants or options. We have a bond payable, 100 bonds at $1,000 each. That's the face amount of the entire bond issue, so that's a bond payable liability. And the difference between the 101,000, I'm sorry, between the, uh, go back down here, the difference to plug, 
to make this balance, to make debits 105,000 equal credits, is a $1,000 credit. Because you'll recall that we're assigning $101,000 to the value of the bond, so that means 100,000 of its face amount, and the 1,000 of it is a premium. And that premium is going to be amortized over the bond's life into income, because we received more than the face amount of the bond. So we will end up debiting the premium on bond payable account and crediting income, and you can watch my effective interest rate videos to understand how that happens, which I believe is intermediate 21 and 22, something around there. You want to learn about effective interest rate. So what we just did there was we used <clears throat> the residual allocation method to handle bonds with detachable warrants to come up with this journal entry. Now there's a slightly different method, which is using relative fair value allocation method to allocate the proceeds. So I say that the proceeds received from the bond and the warrant is allocated based on the percentage of total fair market value of the bond and the warrant. <clears throat> and here's what I mean by that. Same scenario, 100 bonds, $1,000 face amount of each bond. The issue price of the bond is 105 or 105 percent of face amount. But the examples change slightly in this example. The fair market value of the bonds by themselves without the warrants is not known. Same scenario on the warrant. We do know the fair value market value of the warrant at 5500 So in this case, since we don't know the fair market value of the bond, we're going to take proceeds, $105,000. we are going to subtract the fair market value of the warrants, that part that is known, $5,500. And the amount that's left over is going to be considered to be the fair market value assigned to the bonds, $99,500. <clears throat> Here's how that gets posted in a journal entry. Let's scoot this over in the center. Here's the cash proceeds, debit to increase cash. You'll notice that the bond payable amount is $100,000 in this journal entry, just like it was in the journal entry above. $100,000, that's the amount that we have to pay back at maturity. Face amount. The value of the warrant, credit $5,500. Again, they're, in a sense, it's a liability because we must issue stock if the holder decides to exercise warrants. And the way we get the 99500 posted to our books is, as the book amount of the bond is to take the $100,000 face amount credit, bond payable, and then we subtract deb debit discount on bond payable. And the difference between the 100000 and the 500 is how I get 99500 And that discount on bond payable is going to be credited and debited to expense, and that's how we amortize a discount over the bond's life. If you're an issuer, that discount, the amount that we got less than face amount, becomes an expense. And you can see that debits equal credits, so the entry balances. So this was an example of using the fair market values to allocate the proceeds you receive and get the bond and the warrant on your books. That's the end of Intermediate Accounting 6E. You'll find additional video textbooks on the website with information both on and not on YouTube. All of my YouTube videos are now linked to the website, by the way. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat, chat sessions, there's the website. The book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, we're teaching it free online on an ongoing basis. And there's the Twitter account. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.